Hey people, this is Deeb of the R Exposed podcast. I'm really excited to get back into the podcasting world. I took a personal hiatus for some life events and things that happened, but we're coming back and I'm excited to be relaunching some video podcasts and guest interviews to come. But today I'm really excited to launch the RX Snips audio content podcast. This is going to be audio only, both on YouTube and Spotify, and I think you're going to find this to be really interesting. They're short clips, and it's a banter back and forth between two artificial intelligence automated, generated individuals who talk about topics. So you will see here in this first episode of Full Scope, this is all based on content and information that I have fed the AI tool, and it created this podcast that you're about to listen to. So this is a new way where I'm ex examining and exploring short-form audio to bring you topics and things that I think are super important in a way that is engaging, in addition to those video guest interview podcasts, which are the mainstream of our Exposed. So let's get right in with episode one, and I hope you really enjoy the first R X Snips. All right, so we're diving into a topic today that honestly I thought was going to be kind of dry when we started, but the more I read, the more fascinated I am. We're talking mm. about the future of pharmacy, right? You guys sent in some articles about this thing called full scope pharmacy practice, and uh, well, it's way bigger than I expected. Yeah, you know, full scope, it's a buzzword you hear a lot, but it's not just about like pharmacists getting to do more tasks, it's really about them practicing at, well, the full potential of what they're trained to do. That's what caught my eye too. The more I read, like pharmacists have so much knowledge, it's kind of crazy. Sometimes I feel like they know more about medications than my doctor. Right. So what's the holdup? Why aren't they doing more already? Well, the idea behind full scope is that pharmacists would be able to use all that expertise to make more decisions independently, you know, without needing a doctor's okay for every single little thing. Independently. That's the key word, isn't it? And for anyone listening who's thinking, okay, but how does this affect me? Imagine if getting your meds or even just advice about a health concern was as easy as walking into your local pharmacy. No more waiting weeks for a doctor's appointment. Exactly. And that's what these articles are really digging into, how that kind of shift could play out in the real world. A couple of them in particular take different approaches but have the same goal. Like there's this 2018 piece by Suyuki and he jumps right into the practical stuff. He's talking about, you know, what services do patients actually need and how can pharmacists fill those gaps? Okay, so get to the good stuff. What kind of services are we talking about? Well, he talks about pharmacists being able to prescribe for more common ailments, being able to order and interpret certain tests, even getting way more involved in managing chronic conditions, you know, like diabetes, where the ongoing care is so important. That makes total sense. But I'm guessing there's a but coming here. There is, because the whole idea hinges on pharmacists having the training and the resources to actually do all that. Like you can give someone a fancy new power tool, but if they don't have an outlet to plug it into, it's not very useful, is it? Okay, love the analogy. So we've got the potential, but something's got to bridge that gap, which is where that second article comes in, right? What's their take on getting pharmacists plugged in? So this other article, it's interesting because it really digs into the how of making full scope a reality. And it's not just like a to-do list of tasks for pharmacists to check off. Mm -hmm. They frame it more like this puzzle where you need all the pieces to fit just right. Ooh, I like that. The puzzle metaphor. Right. So they talk about laws and regulations needing to be on board, obviously. And then there's the whole financial side of healthcare. How do we make sure pharmacists are actually supported in doing all this? But then here's the really interesting part. They also talk about the mindset of pharmacists themselves needing to shift. Mindset. Okay, now that's a curveball I wasn't expecting. You mean some pharmacists might not even want to do more? Or is it more like, are other healthcare professionals pushing back that whole turf war thing you hear about sometimes? It's funny you say that because the article actually uses the term professional resistance and it cuts both ways. How so? Well, on the one hand, you've got some doctors who might be, shall we say, a little concerned about their role changing, you know, if pharmacists start taking on more responsibility, what does that mean for them? Yeah, that's fair. But you said it cuts both ways. You mean there's pushback from inside pharmacy, too. Exactly. And that's what's so fascinating about this. It's not always as straightforward as you might think. I mean, some pharmacists, they're already swamped, right? Mm -hmm. So adding even more to their plate, it's understandable that some might be a little hesitant about that. 
And then there's, you know, the whole liability thing. Oh, right. Because if they're making more decisions. Exactly. If they're the ones making the calls, there's more potential risk involved. And some pharmacists might not be comfortable with that, which is totally valid. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like you love the idea of more responsibility, but then reality hits. Right. And then on top of all that, there's the training and resources piece we talked about earlier. Like, even if a pharmacist is totally gung-ho about full scope, if they don't feel like they have the support to actually pull it off, that's a recipe for disaster. It's like they're being set up to fail almost. And you know what? That actually impacts all of us, not just the pharmacists themselves. hundred percent. Because at the end of the day, what services you can actually access at your local pharmacy? Right. Well, a lot of that depends on the pharmacists themselves and how comfortable they are with this expanded role. So it's like changing the laws and the rules that's just one piece of the puzzle. You've got to change minds too, right? Both inside and outside of pharmacy. But okay, before we get too far down that road, I got to circle back to something you said earlier. You mentioned some pharmacists might be worried about their workload increasing. And yeah, that makes sense on the surface. But wouldn't expanding their scope actually make things more efficient for everyone? You're thinking in the right direction. Like if pharmacists are the medication experts, why not let them manage more of that? Wouldn't that free up doctors to deal with more complex cases? Exactly. And that leads us to one of the most compelling arguments in favor of this whole full scope thing. Okay, hit me with it. There's actual data to back this up. Mm -hmm. I mean, the articles you sent were full of studies that have looked at this very question. Right. Data, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. So what are we talking about here? What kind of improvements did they find when pharmacists had a bigger role? One study found that when pharmacists were more involved in managing diabetes care, patients had 10% fewer hospitalizations. Wow. Think about what that means, not just for the patients themselves, but for the healthcare system as a whole. Yeah, the cost savings alone. Huge. Yeah. And then there are other studies that have looked at medication adherence, you know, making sure people are actually mm. taking their meds correctly. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. I know I've definitely had moments where I'm like, wait, am I supposed to take this with food or? Exactly. And it turns out pharmacists can make a huge difference there. We're talking significant improvements in how well people stick to their medication regimens, which then leads to, you guessed it, better health outcomes overall. It's all connected, isn't it? It really is. And this ties into another big benefit they highlighted, access to care. Think about it. If you've got a cold or need a prescription refill, getting a doctor's appointment can be a real pain, right? Them. Tell me about it. But pharmacists. Yeah. They're often much easier to get in touch with, right? Oh, for sure. I can usually just pop into my local pharmacy. Exactly. So if they're able to handle more of those basic things, it frees up doctors to spend more time with patients who have more complex needs. See, that's what I'm talking about, that domino effect. Right. Like this one change giving pharmacists more autonomy, it ripples outwards and creates all these positive changes throughout the system. I love it. It's pretty amazing to think about. But OK, I do have one kind of meta question about all of this. How do we know what patients actually want from their pharmacists? Is there a risk of us kind of getting ahead of ourselves and assuming we know what's best for them? That's such an important point. And one of the papers actually addresses that head on. They talk about the need for what they call needs analyses. Needs analyses. Yeah, it sounds kind of jargony, but it is basically just a fancy way of saying, don't just assume. Go out and ask patients what they actually need and want from their pharmacists. OK, so like actual surveys and focus groups and stuff. Exactly. Get that real world feedback. And they actually gave an example from a study where they surveyed patients about their experiences with pharmacist led care for managing blood pressure. Interesting. And what did they find? Were people into it? They were. Overwhelmingly, patients loved the convenience of it. You know, being able to get care from someone they already see regularly, someone who's easy to talk to, they appreciated that personalized attention and honestly just felt more confident in managing their health overall. So we've got the data showing it leads to better outcomes. We've got patients giving it a thumbs up. Hmm. Are you sensing a theme here? This full scope thing seems like a win-win. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. And it actually ties into something else that one of the articles mentioned that I thought was really interesting. They were talking about how letting pharmacists work at their full potential could free up other parts of the healthcare system. Oh, yeah. We touched on that earlier, the whole domino effect idea. But tell me more. What does that look like in practice? Well, imagine if pharmacists were able to take on more responsibility for medication management, especially for people with chronic conditions. Okay. Yeah. That potentially frees up doctors and nurses to focus on more complex cases or even just preventative care, 
It can even help lighten the load on emergency rooms. Wait, ERs too? Now that's a domino effect I was not picturing. How would that work? Well, think about it. A lot of people end up in the ER for things that could have been managed with the right medication or if they had gotten help sooner. So if pharmacists are able to identify those situations early on, they could potentially prevent unnecessary ER visits. That's incredible. I'm telling you, this full scope pharmacy practice, it's not just a good idea. It's like the evolution of healthcare as we know it. But OK, with all these potential benefits, why isn't it happening everywhere? What's the holdup? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what we're going to dig into next. Seriously, it's like, what are we waiting for? Spill the tea. What's holding back this full scope pharmacy utopia? Well, it's not so much one big thing, more like a bunch of smaller hurdles we got to clear. Yeah. Like the articles mentioned the whole regulatory landscape being kind of a mess. Regulatory landscape, you mean like l laws and stuff. Exactly. And the thing is, it's different in every state. Some states are way ahead of the curve giving pharmacists more leeway to practice at their full potential, but then other places, not so much. So it's like a state-by-state -state battle then. Pretty much. Yeah. And that creates a ton of work for the folks who are really passionate about full-scope pharmacy because they have to fight those battles on like 50 different fronts. Oh, man, that's exhausting just thinking about <laughs> it. Okay, so that's the legal hurdle. What else? Well, then there's the whole money thing because okay. right now, the way pharmacists get paid, it's mostly tied to dispensing medications. Right, just churning out those prescriptions. Exactly. Yeah. And that doesn't really incentivize them to, say, spend an extra 20 minutes with a patient talking about their meds or doing more of that hands-on care management. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. If the system's not set up to reward that kind of care, it's not going to happen as often, even if everyone agrees it's a good idea. Exactly. So if we want full-scope pharmacy to really take off, we got to rethink those financial incentives. Like maybe insurance companies need to start reimbursing pharmacists differently, or we need to explore new models of care that actually value their expertise beyond just filling prescriptions. It's like a whole system overhaul, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. It's not simple. Okay, so if I'm hearing you right, it's not just on pharmacists to change. It's on all of us, right? Like what can we as patients do to help move things in the right direction? Honestly, just being aware of this whole full scope thing, that's huge. Talk to your friends, your family, even your own pharmacist about it. The more people understand the potential here, the more likely we are to see some real change. Knowledge is power. Exactly. And, you know, on that note, there's this is one idea that really stuck with me from one of the articles. They called it permissionless innovation. Permissionless innovation? That has a nice ring to it. Right. And it basically boils down to this. Instead of focusing on all the reasons why something can't be done, why not focus on what is possible if we remove those barriers? Like, what if instead of asking permission to innovate, we just empowered people like pharmacists to use their skills to improve patient care? Ooh, I like that. Stop asking can we and start asking how can we? Exactly. And honestly, that's something I would encourage everyone listening to think about. Like, the next time you interact with your pharmacist, just take a minute to consider what full scope pharmacy could look like. Ask them questions. Share what you've learned. It's a conversation worth having, that's for sure. <laughs> wow. You know, when we started talking about the future of pharmacy, I have to admit I was expecting something way more, well, boring. I hear you. Not exactly the sexiest topic on the surface. Right. But this has been seriously eye-opening. The research is compelling. The potential is huge. And frankly, it feels like we're on the verge of a real revolution in how we think about healthcare. I agree. And the best part is, it's not some far off futuristic thing, right? We're yeah. talking about changes that could happen now, yeah. changes that could benefit everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. So to everyone listening, let's keep this conversation going. Talk to your pharmacists, talk to your doctors, talk to your lawmakers. And most importantly, stay curious because who knows what amazing innovations are just around the corner. Yes. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of full scope pharmacy practice. And until next time, stay curious.